YouTube. What's going on? Welcome to Mo's Nose. I'm your host, Mo's. Today, we have another episode in our checkup series. What does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. We are doing a checkup of all 32 teams in the NFL. We're seeing what they lost, what they gained. We're taking a look at potential starting lineups as we are in the beginning stages of the training camp portion of the 2021 offseason. So let's let's jump right in. We're going to take a trip up to the shot. We're going to highlight them bears. We're going to see what's going on. Let's start with some of the key losses this team suffered. First, cornerback Kyle Fuller. Man, that was a tough one. Um, I don't know how you get rid of Kyle Fuller. I'm sure it was a business decision. You know, financials, you know, not looking good, you know, right now for the future. Um, so you make that move, move on from Kyle Fuller. Um, but he's a really, really good cornerback. Um, he played well with, for Chicago in that defense. Um, so that's a tough one to see go. Um, they lose left tackle Charles Leno. They lose right tackle Bobby Massey. Um, they lose offensive weapon Cordero Patterson. And Mitchell Trubisky is no longer with the Bears. Now, put that on the, on the losses because he's no longer there. But that might be a, a plus. That might be a, 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 a positive thing that Mitchell is no longer there. Then let's take a look at the additions. And the first name on the additions list may not be a positive for the additions. That may be a loss. Red Rifle, Andy Dalton, coming over from Dallas, um, is now uh, one of the QBs uh, for the Chicago Bears. We got CB, uh, Desmond Trufant, uh, wide receiver Marquise Goodwin, running back Damian Williams, and uh, their first round draft pick that they traded up for quarterback Justin Fields. So if you look at the names that they added versus the names that they lost, I think um, they didn't add um, as nearly as much value as they lost. I think with, with Kyle Fuller alone um, and the tackles, Leno and Massey, offensive weapon Cordell Pat Patterson, I don't think that they added to equate to the value that they lost, but we'll have to see, you know, how this shakes out and how they put everything together. Um, let's take a look at this projected offense um, and defense uh, for this team. Now I have Andy Dalton as the starting quarterback. Um, I think Andy's a bridge. I don't think anybody believes that he's coming in to be the franchise quarterback for the Chicago Bears, especially after trading up for Justin Fields. I think you start Andy Dalton, let Justin Fields get his feet wet, build some confidence, get the, the playbook and the offense, you know, under his grasp. Um, and then you let him take over somewhere midseason. Andy Dalton is just a bridge. But if we're talking about who is what's going to be the starting lineup for week one, I have to put Andy Dalton there um, to start the season. Starting running back is going to be David Montgomery. That's a no brainer. Offensive line, I think at right at left tackle. Um, Tevin Jenkins slides right into that slot. Uh, Tevin Jenkins was getting first round comps. The Bears, you know, use some assets, trade up to get Justin Fields. And by the grace of God, we're still able to get Tevin Jenkins in the second round. I think that was absolutely amazing for them in this draft. Now you slide him in at the left tackle spot. And you're good. Next to him at left guard, we have James Daniels. Uh, starting center is going to be Cody Whitehair. Um, here is the problem area, though, that I see is this right side. I have starting at right guard Larry Borum and then starting at right tackle Jermaine Effetti. I think if we do see issues, it's going to come from this side right here. This is the problem area that I see. It may be diminished because I, I do see uh, the Bears offense rolling with a lot of two tight end sets, as you see here, starting tight end will be Cole Komet. And then you have Jimmy Graham on the other side. Do you see them running a lot of two tight end sets, maybe leaving one of these guys to offer help to this right side over here. And then you have reliable pass catchers, big bodies, short to intermediate throws, big bodies on third down, big bodies in the red zone. 
Um, so I can definitely see that. Starting wide receivers, Allen Robinson, again, another big body, your number one wide receiver. So now you have 6'3", 6'5", 6'6", weapons. You know, when you need a tough third down conversion over the middle, um, when you need a big body in the red zone to, to box out a smaller defender, um, you have those options here. Um, and then you have your, your speedster and uh, Darnell Mooney. Um, so again, I do think Justin Fields takes over on um, this starting quarterback spot. Week, week six and beyond, I think you can see him being inserted. I mean, unless he just comes into camp and just has an outstanding training camp, um, his his preseason games are off the charts and they're forced to start him just because of how good he looks. But if you know, if he doesn't come in and look outstanding, he looks good, but he looks like he still needs time to, you know, get acclimated to the NFL style of play, learning the offense and getting that under his grasp a little bit. I see Andy Dalton starting. And then you see Justin Fields come in after sometime after week six. Moving over to the defense, um, I still think this uh, unit is a strength of this team. Up front, uh, we got veterans, uh, Bilal Nichols, Eddie Goldman, man in the middle, um, and Akeem Hicks. Linebackers, we have our pass rushers on the edges and Robert Quinn and Khalil Mack. Uh, linebackers, we have Danny Trevathan and Roquan Smith. Roquan is an animal. He's only going to continue to get better. Outside, I do have Desmond Trufant starting. He's a veteran presence. As long as he can stay healthy, that spot is his. Then we have Jalen Johnson opposite him. Uh, safeties, again, more veterans uh, to Sean Gibson and Eddie Jackson. Again, Eddie Jackson also ball hawk. He's been getting better every year. Um, so you got players at every level of defense. Uh, so the Bears defense should continue to be good. Uh, we'll just have to see what the offense does. Um, and if Andy Dalton isn't getting it done, see if Justin uh, Fields can provide a spark uh, that Matt Nagy is hoping that um, he can. Because uh, if not, I think that's Matt Nagy's job. But that's remain that remains to be seen. I, that was a pretty quick video. That's going to wrap it up for the Chicago Bears. Not really much to talk about. Uh, the team pretty much stayed the same other than, I think, what, one position on defense that's different, which would be Desmond Trufant. Desmond Trufant, that's a new face. Um, and on offense, uh, besides Andy Dalton and Tevin Jenkins, maybe Borum and Fetty are new faces too, but they've been in the league a while. Um, it's pretty much this, the same uh, lineups, starting lineups is last year. Um, got a rookie here, possibly have a rookie here at the quarterback position. Um, but the Bears are in a, in a tough division. Um, the Lions, I don't, I don't know if the Lions will be better. Um, they have a new head coach, no more Matt Stafford. They have Jared Goff. So, I wouldn't, I wouldn't peg them as being in any type of competition with their division just yet. Uh, the Packers are always going to be uh, one of the top teams in that division, but that all depends on what Aaron Rodgers is doing. Uh, I, we don't even know if he's going to show up, if he's going to play this year, if he's going to get traded. So it all depends on what Aaron decides to do. Uh, and then the Vikings, I think they'll, they'll be better. Um, still some issues on defense that I worry about. Um, some issues on the offensive line, although they were able to draft Christian Derrissaw. Um, they have the offensive weapons. Kirk Cousin is is a steady, solid quarterback. Um, so, I mean, the, the Bears have an opportunity um, to take control of this division this year. Uh, we'll just have to see if uh, Andy Dalton can rise to the occasion um, or if Justin Fields is the guy and provides this team a spark once he's inserted into the starting lineup. Okay, that's going to do it. That'll wrap it up for this this edition, this episode of The Checkup with the Chicago Bears. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. Helps me curate the content to better suit you, the viewer, and me, the content creator. Um, if you want to interact with me, you can drop a comment down below. I love interacting with you. Or if you want to hit me up on my social media sites, you can do that as well. I'll drop the links to all of those uh, platforms in the description. 
Again, love interacting with you guys. It's been great so far, and I just want to keep that up. If you're new to Mo's Knows, first of all, thank you for your time and attention. I greatly appreciate it. You're a part of the family now, and there's nothing you can do about it. So why don't you become a know-it-all by hitting that subscribe button? Then take another two seconds and jump over to that bell icon so that you get notified every time new content drops right here at Mo's Knows. We moving through this series. So you want to be informed when the next video comes out. And once this series is over and we move on to a new series, you want to get those notifications as well. You want to stay in tune and up to date with everything we got going on here at Mo's Nose. Love you. Appreciate you. Catch you in the next episode. I'm out.